Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing? I'm like, yay! Hi. <laughs> Let me um get my list out here. So how you doing, hun? Okay. How you doing, hun? Good, good, and you? Now it's echoing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right back. <laughs> it's always okay. Hi. <laughs> Adriana. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I thought about what I was going to do. Remember, I said we were going to work in groups, but I don't know how to keep all of you quiet. <laughs> so you might have to do my little exercise as um, by yourselves. You're going to have to get a little creative. <laughs> oh. We're going to go over the muscles, and then I'm going to give you a little assignment, and you're going to have to um, use the word that we went over in a sentence, like a story. And I usually set up like groups of students together so that they can work together on a, a little paragraph, but some you're going to have to do it by yourself. So I'm gonna, only going to make you do like five words each instead of 10 <laughs> when I had you in a group. <laughs> and so you're just going to write a, a funny little story using the words or the muscles that we talk about today. Okay, so it's not hard. <laughs> Jocelyn. Uh, here we go. Making sure I get everybody on here. <laughs> and I only made 20 questions for the test, so it's not that hard. <laughs> Yesterday I kept saying only 30, only 20. <laughs> So can you handle 20 questions for tomorrow? I, think I mean, so. tw 20 is going to be better. Okay, 20 is all you're going to get for tomorrow. So you'll be okay with that. I'm, <laughs> 20 I'm, difficult questions, 20 easy questions. I mean, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but. Oh my gosh. Wait till I start giving you the questions. You're going to go, I know that. I know that. I know that. I did. Uh, I went through the question um, assessment on the on the pivot point, and that was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> the second one for me, yeah, the second one was bad. The three point two, <laughs> I did horrible. Same here, oh. Anthony. So How many questions did you have? Chapter over again. I want to say there were twenty questions, but on I the, was the just, challenge on the challenge yeah. but i was so lost some of it i knew what it was and a lot of it i was just like i just read this but there's so <laughs> wow. much that is just it's it's a lot. yeah it's a lot i'm gonna look at that one and see what's on there because i haven't seen like that that 3.1 3.2 i haven't seen that stuff on there for cosmos i'm gonna have to go and look and see what they're asking you to know most of the time the question that uh, we got on the challenge, it's on the test most of the time. It's the same question. Yeah. yeah. Well, today I'm actually going over just the test questions. Okay. 
So we'll actually do that before, um, before I give the regular theory. That way um, you won't have to be thinking about two things at once. <laughs> so we'll get the test question out of the way. Test tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Okay. I, you know when I tell my students, I'm like, when you take, when I go over test questions, write the answer down, okay? And from the answer, you can literally give a definition. You'll know what that question is going to be about, right? If you know what the word means, right? So if you need to make um, a study guide for yourself, take the answers that I give you and define them, okay? It's almost like defining your keywords because that's where the questions come from, is your keywords. And the only thing I can tell you is that what is is the same for pivot point and the same for Milady as far as textbooks is the keywords, okay? They literally have the same words, okay? And that's what they write their sentences on or their questions on. Um, all right, so when you're studying, study your keywords because if you don't know what a word means in the sentence, how are you gonna answer it correctly? You can't. Even if there's one word in that sentence or that whole question that you don't know, it's gonna mess with you, okay? It's gonna mess with your answer. So you gotta know what the terms are, okay? Because they're not gonna give you a definition of what that word means so you can answer the question. It doesn't work that way, all right? So you have to know your key terms. Make flashcards if you need to, okay? When you're trying to study for a chapter, that's the best advice I can give you. Because it well, does have- yeah. Normally a chapter has got like 20, 30 terms, but this mm -hmm. is like 240, yeah. 200. And so. so if you go to the NIC sheet on the Board of Barber and Cosmetology website, okay, when you first pull the website up, it has consumer and have applicants and it has a couple other little menus, right? Hit the applicant one, okay? And it'll scroll down and it'll say exam information. Mm -hmm. Click on that. Okay, and then you'll scroll down and you'll be able to see the NIC, the NIC sheet for, and it's called a CIB, that stands for Candidate Information Bulletin, and you want the written half of it, because you already know your practical half, but the written half of it tells you the information you need to know, and basically, what I used to do with my, the estheticians, I'd show them where it is in the chapter, I'd go, this is in chapter seven, this is in chapter, you know, nine, or whatever, but you could go and find that information, because that's what they want you to know, that's what your test is going to be on, that information. It's not the entire okay. book, but it is certain no. parts of, right. the, of the chapter. Okay, so you can pick that up. Usually they give you one and in, in state board, but you, you can pick it up yourself, you know, on the website. Okay. Okay, I'm making sure I got everyone here. I just came in. Did you get me? It's Samantha. Samantha, yes, I did. Huh? Okay, thank you. So that's why I have Adriana twice. I'm like, I'm missing somebody. <laughs> okay. I'll give them a couple of minutes. All right. What time is it? 12.34. Give them two more minutes. That's a six-minute <laughs> mark. <laughs> Let me get who I do have and put it on the roll sheet. Uh, Abby, if that was who I did. Okay. May not. Okay. I've got Isabella yet. Um, have I got? Okay. Okay, looks like I've got everybody in here. So, before I even start, um, you might want to pull out a piece of paper so that you can um, um, you might want to pull out write the answers down to these. The answers down to these questions. <laughs> as I go through, you know, as we go through the questions. Because there's 20 questions on the test for tomorrow, okay? And you need to write maybe the answer to the question, not the question itself, but the answer to it. And then you just define that word, okay? Okay, Venetia, you're gonna have to shut your sound off. <laughs> I don't know why. There, now see it's not echoing. <laughs> Where are you? 
are you? Are you in my closet? <laughs> you know, being so close, that's usually what happens. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go through my... <laughs> You're what? <laughs> off. You're off? <laughs> Isabella, there we go. All right, I'm going to call roll here. Okay, Venetia, I got you. Anthony, got you. Ava, where are you? Where'd you go? There you are. <laughs> Adriana, there you go. Jocelyn? Yeah. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> Jasmine, Hannah, okay. Wave yeah. your little hand so I can see where you're at. Jasmine H. Ah, there you are. Sorry, I <laughs> just need blind. Lena? Okay, gotcha. All right, Abby. There you go. Okay, Athena, you guys show me that pretty face. <laughs> there you go. Let me see that face. <laughs> oh, I gotta see your face. Okay, first. <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Samantha H. Got you. Okay, Tatiana. Uh, where Here. Are there you are. Okay. And Isabella. Here. There you are. Okay. Did anyone, did I not call someone? Okay. Everyone got called. Okay. So here's a little, okay. Okay. Got her. All right. So that means okay. So we're going to go through our test questions, okay? And there are twenty. So if you're paying attention, you might want to write. I said the answer to these questions, okay? So I'm going to start with you, Venetia. Okay, you're going to be the first question. What is another name for histology? Is it gross anatomy, microscopic anatomy? Osteology or physiology? Physiology. It's microscopic anatomy for histology. Okay. Okay. Um, Anthony, this one's for you. The study of the functions of the organs and systems of the body is known as anatomy, physiology, biology, or gross anatomy. It's physiology. Yes. Good. Okay, um, Ava, this one's for you. Bone is the hardest structure in the body and is composed of one third organic matter and two thirds oxygen, two thirds hydrogen, two thirds mineral matter, or two thirds nitrogen. The mineral matter one? Yes, it's mineral matter. Good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Adriana, this one's for you, okay? How many groups are the bones of the skull divided into? Five, three, two, or four? Five. Actually, this one's two. Remember the eight cranium and the 14 facial, okay? All right, okay, Jocelyn. This next one's for you. What part of the cell is known as the control center? The cytoplasm, the protoplasm, the nucleus, or the cell membrane? Nucleus. Yes. Okay, um, Jasmine H. This one's for you. Which body system sends and receives body messages? Muscular, nervous, circulatory, or endocrine? The nervous system? Yes. Hey, um, Lena, this one's for you. During which process does the body store water? Can you guys hear me? I'm frozen. 
I can't hear you. Okay. You're Did you guys hear now. me? Okay. Well, you're good now. Try it now. Okay. Um, during which process does the body store water, food, and oxygen for times when they are needed by the body? Is it digestion, circulation, catabolism, or anabolism? Lena, can you hear me? No, oh, I didn't know the question was for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's okay. You want me to repeat it? Yes, please. Okay. During which process does the body store water, food, and oxygen in the body? Is it digestion? This one's an anabolism. Okay, it's okay. the building up of the molecules. Okay. Okay. It's the one that doesn't have that definition. Okay. Remember what I was talking about yesterday? <laughs> okay. Okay, Abby, this one's for you. Okay. The physical foundation of the body is known as the reproductive system, the muscular system skeletal system or nervous system? Um, and then what was the question again? The physical foundation of the body. Is it the reproductive, the muscular, the skeletal or the nervous system? The nervous system? Is bone actually hold up there's no foundation for it so that's where it gets the term it's foundation okay so Coming was it the you. skeletal system sorry you cut out yes it was yeah. skeletal. Mm -hmm. okay i'm sorry you couldn't hear it either no, <laughs> no. i hate this thing <laughs> sometimes <laughs> okay it is a skeletal system. Sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. I got something on the chat here. I sure try to tell me something here. Let me pull that up. Like, I can't hear you. Yep, that's pretty much. It's breaking up. <laughs> um, Samantha H, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. It was just earlier. Are you breaking up again? Well, we'll see. <laughs> okay this question that formed the digits or fingers are called ulna carpals phalanges or metacarpals phalanges yes good okay um how to make up Organs, tissues, lungs, or systems? Can you repeat the question? The same kind make up organs, systems, tissues, or lungs. I still didn't hear you. It like didn't. Okay, hold I don't on. I'm gonna try something here. Really, hold on, you guys. Okay, I'm doing something really quick. Okay, I closed out the pivot point. Let's see if that helps at all. Okay. All right. The question was: groups of cells of the same kind make up organs, systems. Tissues or lungs? Tissues. Yes. Good. Hold on one second here. Kalina. Okay, there we go. All right. 
Um, Isabella, this one's for you. Okay. The 14, excuse me, not that. <laughs> What's the name of the largest bone of the facial skeleton and consists of the lower jaw? Is it the cranium, the mandible, the maxillae, or the nasal? The maxillae? It's actually the mandible is the, the bottom of the jaw. The maxillae is on the top though, you're close. Okay. All right. Um, let me go to Elizabeth. This one's for you. Can you hear me? Elizabeth? Elizabeth? Okay. Just checking there. <laughs> Here's your question. The chemical process in which the cells receive nutrients for cell growth and reproduction is known as anabolism, physiology, metabolism, or catabolism. Catabolism. Actually, this one's gonna be the metabolism because it's the chemical process altogether. Okay, so just remember that one's metabolism. Okay, um, Karina, you just joined us. Okay, here's your question. What is the name of the skeleton of the head that encloses and protects the brain? Is it the parietal, the skull, the cranium, or the mandible? The skull? Yes, good. Okay, Venetia, this one's for you. What are the basic units of living matter called? Tissues, bones, cells, yes. kidneys. Yes. <laughs> cells? Okay, yes, that's right. Hey, Anthony, this one's for you. <laughs> um, so let's see, what is the study of the bones called? Anatomy, physiology, osteology, or histology? It's osteology. Good. Okay. Ava, this one's for you. Um, the study of the organs and systems of the body is called biology, cosmetology, physiology, or anatomy. Can you repeat the question again, please? The study of the organs and systems of the body. Anatomy? Yes, good. Okay, who's next? Um, Adriana? Okay, this one's for you. Are you still here? I'm looking around. There you are. She's like, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> okay, here's your question. What is the name of the point where two or more bones are joined together? Is it osteology, temporal, joint, or cranium? Joint. Okay, Jocelyn, this one's for you. Okay, the hyoid bone located in the throat is sometimes referred to as the spine, the ribs, the Adam's apple, or the thorax. Adam's apple? Yes, good. Uh -huh. Okay, um, Jasmine H, this one's for you. Which type of tissue supports, protects, and holds the body together? Is it nerve tissue, epithelial tissue, connective tissue, or muscular tissue? Is it connective? Yes. Okay, is, is everybody writing these questions down? Just wanna make sure I got all of them there. Okay, how many have we got there, Samantha? We're at 19. We'll, we'll be okay, on 20. What, okay, good. Then I've got my last one. Because this almost sounds like it's a repeat, but it isn't. Okay. This is going to go to Lena. Okay. The study of structures too small to be seen without using a microscope is called physiology, biology, gross anatomy, or microscopic anatomy. <laughs> microscopic anatomy correct that's right okay those are your 20 questions 
Okay, thank you, Samantha, for keeping my up because I was jumping around, not putting them in the order <laughs> on purpose because for some reason I got somebody that comes in and just memorizes A B B B A B B B, you know, whatever. <laughs> There is one question which uh, the answer was cut. What was the question again, please? Which one? There was one question. The answer was cut. What was the question? But what was the answer? Skull. The answer was cut. But I missed the question because it was cracking. Okay, I'm trying to remember. The answer was. The answer was skull. Skull. Oh, it's asking you what, um, hold on, I know which one you're talking about. Um, what is the name of the skeleton of the head? That's what it's asking, okay? Because it encloses and protects the brain, okay? Okay, okay, thanks. All right, so there you go. You've got all of your questions for tomorrow to study from. I think you did pretty well, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not that hard. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, yeah, give me that test. I'll take that one any day. <laughs> All right, let me try and pull up um, the other pivot point now. I guess if that, I can't pull up the lesson plan ahead of time because it, it just acts funny on the computer. And that's what was causing it to break up. So now you got to wait until I get the lesson plan back up, <laughs> which is kind of silly. But as soon as I get it up here, I will change this screen for you. Come on. There we go, we got this one going. Okay. And you know what I feel like sometimes when I have to do this, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take you on a little ride. You're all gonna go with me and see all the different pages I open up. <laughs> mm. That's what it sounds like every time I do this, I'm like, okay. <laughs> Share the screen. <laughs> Come on. Go. Okay, so you're gonna watch me go through the rest of the steps so that you don't have to stare at my face the entire time. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go up here to learn. And then we're gonna go to 3.2. Our swan fundamentals. There. Okay. It's still spinning. All right. Come on. There we go. Just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So it's bringing up the lesson, then I got to download the, the slides. You guys have the access to these slides also, do, don't you? Not yet, because I think that's supposed to be a part of the new launch. Are you kidding me? You don't have that part at all? No, because it's supposed to be like a couple months, right? Before they make it accessible to everybody. Oh my goodness. I did not know that because mine can still get that too. And I was like, what? Well, I think the teachers got it because you guys are testing it out. But no, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about my old version of my estheticians. They oh, have yeah. access to the slides. Yeah, you guys don't, I guess. Mm -hmm. I just did not know that until just now. I thought you could at least go back and look at my slides. Okay. No. It will on the next one, huh? So they say, because it's basically going to go through exactly what I'm seeing and giving you as information. That's what you're going to put in your book now. And what's kind of funny is for years, I took what was out of the study guide and made that my lecture because that's what they had to fill in so i had to get make sure i covered all of that right so i always did it that way and now all of a sudden that's exactly how they're going to put the new program out like that <laughs> and the, the theory is going to be filling in the study guide just like we're well, doing right now <laughs> we're waiting for it so. i know it's coming it's coming okay So we got through two of them and we're gonna go into this muscular system. So does anybody know off the top of their head what the study of muscles is called? Myology? 
Myology, good. Okay, let me get to that part of it. I'm gonna, come on, let's go. Well, you know what, I can do this faster this way. There we go, there. Okay, there you go. Bingo, how's that? <laughs> All right, so myology is the study of the structure, functions, and diseases of the muscle, okay? There are more than 500 muscles in your body and they compose about 40% of your body's weight. They produce movement when they're stimulated. So you have myology to fill in on your study guide and the area where it says 500, okay? You're gonna fill that area where I said the body is composed of more than 500 muscles. Okay, you haven't filled that in, let me know. Just I want to look around the room and see if anybody else needs that. Just a few seconds. Still. Okay. Ready? Yeah, I'm okay. All right, so we're gonna to move to the next page. And these are the functions of the muscles. Remember I told you yesterday, they put it in a different order, but I told you you could use the acronym MAPS, which meant movement, attachment, protection, and support. Well, in the four major functions of the muscular system, it's miscellaneous, M-I-S-C, which stands for, okay, movement, Okay, the body movements, all right. I is involved in functions of other body systems, if you write it my way, okay. S is support the skeleton, and C would have been contour the body. So use M-I-S-C if you want to, and fill those in to help you remember it. Um, hold on one second, you guys. Wait, I'm not, I haven't muted it yet. Okay, let me bring you back up here to that other screen. Sorry. Interruptions. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> you can put it in any way you want, but I just like to use acronyms so that it helps me remember things. <laughs> because it, they're going to ask you about the functions of each system, okay? What are they used for? Okay, just so that you remember them. You guys still need this on the screen? Because I took it down so quickly. <laughs> All right. I don't want to change the page then. We should get down to the two types of muscles. Okay. There is voluntary or what's known as striated, which respond to commands regulated by will. We control them. Okay, and the second one is involuntary or non-striated, which respond automatically to control various body parts. This would be like digestion working for you. Okay, you, don't, you can't stop it when starting to the digestive process, it, your body just does it. So it says the salon professional is primarily concerned with the voluntary muscles of the head, face, neck, arms, and hands, because those are the areas that we work over. Okay, so you're just going to fill in the striated and non-striated, it should say two types of muscles. You're just going to put striated and non-striated. Your definitions are going to go down where it says differences. Okay. Every time somebody read that to me, I'd be like, um, respond to commands regulated with by will, like who's will? Like, come on. <laughs> it just means, you know, <laughs> you control them. Okay. 
Let me make sure everybody's still writing. Okay. Abby, you filling it in, hun? Okay, good. All right, does anybody still need that on the screen? Lena, do you still need this? No? Okay. All right. Let's turn the page. And we're going to go into I think it's terminology. Okay. All right. I want you to remember something from yesterday. Okay. We had gone through those eight cranial bones, right? And 14 facial bones. And I told you at that time, you're going to find that the muscles have the similar names from the bones. Okay. So when we start catching these, I'm going to have you remember them. Okay. And say, because I really need you to do that for you to remember them. All right, this special terminology, it's used to identify muscle locations or functions. So anterior is in front of, okay? And you're going to be talking about that because we're gonna be doing ear muscles, okay? You're gonna have one in front of, one in back of, and one on top of, okay? So posterior, it's behind or in back of. We kind of already know that one, right? She fell on her posterior, <laughs> okay? Super, superioris is located above or it's larger, like superior. Okay. Inferioris is located below or smaller, like inferior. Okay. Leviator means to lift up, like an elevator, right? Depressor will draw down or depress, kind of like that tongue depressor. And dilator means to open, enlarge, or expand. Okay. You've got your eyes dilated before if you've had your eyes checked for glasses. Okay. So I'm trying to give you some reference to, so that you can refer back to these words because they're going to come up over and over and over again. Okay. So I need you to fill all of those in in your study guide. Okay. And then I'm just going to check the room and make sure everybody's filling that in. All right. All right, does everyone have that in already? Does someone need it still up on the screen? I do. Okay, no problem. I don't mind leaving it up if you're filling it in. <laughs> oh, those of you that, on your study guide, does it have that salon professionals primary concern? On your, your yeah. handout? Okay. Just an FYI, we, I said that just before we did this, where you're actually, you're concerned with voluntary muscles of the head, face, neck, arms, and hands, if you want to put that in there. Okay, because we work on those areas. So because we work on it, we need to know where their muscles are located and similar to their bones. Okay, so that'll help you fill in that salon professional's primary concern. You still need that on the, the screen? No, I'm good. Okay. I'm going to change the page. Okay. All right. So it's going to go into the cardiac muscle. This is the only muscle of its kind. <laughs> okay. It's a muscle of the heart itself. Okay. And it functions involuntary. So what you see on the screen is what you need to put in where it says cardiac muscle. It's the only muscle of its kind, okay, in the human body. And it functions involuntarily, I meaning it works by itself. Okay. This next part, it's a joke, okay? I mean, literally, I'm going to have you remember it by a joke, okay? <laughs> so once you're finished this, let me know. Because the three parts of those muscle, there's like an emoji. Okay, that kind of looks like this. And then there's a finger that goes like this. Okay, I think it means like, okay, or something like that, right? I'm pretty sure it don't mean okay, but. What does it mean then? I'm well, serious. I thought, I thought that's I what mean, it meant. Are you talking about like a I finger? Sure a finger pointing towards a hole? Uh-huh. That I saw it and I, I swear to God, I saw it on, on the computer and it said okay underneath it. So that's where I got the okay from. Okay. Yeah, because it said okay that. to it. 
<laughs> oh my God, you're terrible. Okay. We're going to go through the three parts of the muscle here. <laughs> you're going to have to use that as an analogy though. Let me tell you why. <laughs> All right. I'm going to come back and change that page. The origin is going to be the non-moving part of the muscle. Okay. Why are you not moving? <laughs> Now the computer's stuck. Come on. Oh no. Come on. All right. I can get this to work down here. There we go. It's starting to work. Okay. So come on. There we go. Okay. The origin is going to be the non-moving or fixed portion attached to bones or other fixed muscles. The belly is gonna be the midsection of the muscle and it's between the two attached sections. The insertion is the portion of the muscle that's movable. So using your eye for insertion, okay, you're going to move it to the origin. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> the okay thing that I was trying to talk about for the emoji, that's how you remember this one. The eye is the movable part and the O is the stable part where it doesn't move, okay? And the belly is between the two sections. Did I make that sound bad? <laughs> what happened here? We can't, yeah. I mean, I have it written down already, but we- the, I know, I, my screen just changed on me and I'm like, oh, <laughs> didn't touch it. Come on. I don't even want that part. I want this. Come on. Why is it? There it is. Okay, there you go. Sorry. Okay, so fill in your area of the study guide for the three parts of the muscle. So they're always going to tell you this little phrase, okay? How is the muscle, how does the muscle move? Okay, and it always insertion to origin is how it's moving okay so when they ask you a question it's never going to be oh is it origin to insertion they're asking you insertion to origin okay just remember that little phrase because that's how the question is going to be answered it's always the muscle moves by insertion to origin okay let me see if it's home all right got people still writing Now I've got like ceilings and no faces. Yeah, I don't like ceilings. They'd like to see faces. Okay. Are you still writing this in? Well, can they see it? You should be yeah, able to. Yeah, I can see. Oh, you I just see. see. You, can, you can't see it, um, Anthony? No, I see a pivot point with the video and a study slides and some oh, circling yeah. stuff. Okay, hold yeah. on. Okay, hold on. Stop. Okay. All right. So I'm going to share that screen again. Okay. It's this one here. Okay. There. You got that one? Not yet. There you go. No, it's okay. okay, good. <laughs> I was like, no, oh, please. All right. So how does the muscle move? It's the insertion. To origin, yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I know a couple of you got bumped out. All right, has everyone got this? I got kicked off. I got oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I know I saw the two of you. Okay, have you gotten this part filled in yet? No, not, not yet. Okay. okay, let me know when you finish, okay? Let me see, I've got an extra screen up here. OK. 
screen. There you go. Got it. All right. Okay, so we should be going into the muscle. Okay, on your your book, you should have how the muscle produces movement. Correct. Yes. Okay. You're going to put one contraction is tightening. Okay, contraction is tightening, and expansion is relaxing. Okay. So in my book, it just gives contraction, tightening, and expansion relaxing, but I don't know, it might have like different places for you to fill in on your study guide or book. You're talking about the seven ways to stimulate muscles, right? No, 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 this is before at the other, on the other page, right after the three parts of the muscle, doesn't it say how the muscle- Oh, yeah, produces? yeah, yeah, how okay, the muscle that's produces. that's what I was asking for. Yeah. Then we'll go into the seven ways to stimulate, because it just didn't go into it in the slide, so I had to fill that one in. <laughs> okay. So now muscles will produce movement through contraction and expansion. The seven ways to stimulate muscle tissue include, okay? And in those bubbles that you have, okay? You're gonna put one in there, it's gonna say massage, okay? Two, you're gonna put electric current and it's giving an example of high frequency or ferratic current. And by the way, you cannot use ferratic in California, okay? You can use high frequency, but not ferratic. The third bubble is going to be light rays. This will include infrared rays and ultraviolet rays. So when you get the heat lamps, that's what they're referring to also, because it's got heat rays also in the heating lamp. Sorry, light rays is gonna be the ultraviolet, like when you're tanning in the tanning booth. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then the heat rays are gonna be the heating lamps or caps. And the next one's gonna be moist heat in both steamers or steam towels. Nerve impulses through your nervous system. And then the last one is through chemicals, through certain acids or salts. Basically what they're talking about are acids and alkalines because an alkaline is a salt or a base, it's the other term for it. Okay, so when we're using galvanic, you are using acids and alkalines together. So you can stimulate that muscle, okay? So you have massage, electric current, light rays, heat rays, moist heat, nerve impulses and chemicals. Okay, I'm gonna wait until you fill that part in and then I'm gonna go into the scalp and face muscles. Hmm. This is quite a, do you guys remember what um, the skull is also known as? Um, the cranium. Cranium, yeah. Just gonna check. And what does epi mean? If you're thinking about it, like on top, like epidermis, right? Okay. So when we get to the scalp and face muscles, okay, we're going to be talking about the epicranius, okay, which is basically it covers the cranium. <laughs> Have you got all of this information in yet? Anyone still need that on the on the screen? No? All right, then we're gonna go into this. Okay, scalp and face muscles. All right, what you're going to add into your study guide is this. It's the primary interest to the salon professional as scalp and neck massages and facials are performed, okay? Okay, and there's this little phrase underneath there. Muscles affected by massage are generally manipulated from the insertion attachment to the origin, okay? I want you to memorize that it's from insertion to origin. And the funny thing about that little thing is <laughs> I just wanna be a fly on the wall at State Board because every one of my estheticians has to remember this also. And they're always going like this with that little, okay, trying to remember, okay, okay, I remember now it's I into the O. <laughs> I just wanna watch somebody sit there and try and figure out what the question meant when they're <laughs> taking their test. So yes, this does need to go into the scalp and face muscle area of your study guide, okay?
when I'm in a classroom, I usually take your doll head and I ask you to write the bones on the face of the doll and then we'll draw in the muscles and the nerves in different colors of a Sharpie. And it helps you remember when you actually have to place it on the face of a doll. You know what I mean? So if you want to do that to help you remember, you can do that also. Okay. Anyone still need that on the screen? Yeah. Okay, good. Not a problem. I'm good now. All right. Anyone else still need that? Okay. Here we go. All right, the scalp muscles. All right, all right, come back here. All right, it's known as the epicranius, but you see that word in the middle of it? It's called the occipital frontalis. Okay, what that means is it's a band that actually connects the frontalis to the occipitalis. It's that white little area that's between the two. That's what the occipital frontalis is, okay? So the reason why it's called that is because it's got part of the occipitalis, which is occipital of your bone, right? The occipitalis is used for the muscle at the back and the frontalis from your frontal bone, right? The frontalis is the forehead, all right? So what is on the screen right now, you need to put in there, epicranius, AKA occipital frontalis, all right? And it's formed by two muscles. It says joined together by a tendon. It's the only one tendon that you need to know about. It's called a ponyrosis. Okay. And it literally runs along the, the scalp, like on both sides of you right here. This tendon's running this way. Okay. So you can see where knowing what your bones are is going to help you with your muscles. Do you see what I'm talking about? Okay. So you can always enter as the frontalis is the front part of the epicranius and the occipitalis is at the nape part, okay? The forehead part actually draws the scalp forward. Uh, the one in the back draws the scalp back, okay? Did we already do the epicranium? That's what this is right here, hon, the epicranius. It covers the cranium. Okay, hold on one second again. We have epicranium and epicranius. Oh, okay. Hold, epicranium would be the skull and that epicranius is the muscle. Okay, hold on one second. Sorry, are you guys still with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not frozen. Not yet. <laughs> okay, was I muted there for a minute? <laughs> you were. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I had two teachers interrupting me again. <laughs> All right, so on your epicranium, okay, 
your epicranius covers the epicranium. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's epicranium is basically that skull, the skull part on top. All right. Okay, so that's what you want us to write in there? Yeah, under your epicranium, you're just going to put it's the part of the skull, I guess you could say, the whole top of the head is called the epicranium. All right, the epicranius is the muscle, okay, that covers this right here, the frontalis and the occipitalis. It's a band that goes over the top of the head that connects those two muscles together. So epicranius is like AKA occipitofrontalis, connecting the muscles of the frontalis and occipitalis together. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. You should have like an illustration at the bottom of that page. Okay, you had one would have been the frontalis and two would have been occipitalis. Do you have an illustration? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to change the page. All right, we're gonna go into the ear muscles, which have absolutely nothing to do with what we have to do with, okay, except that I'm supposed to ask one student, does anybody have, can anybody wiggle their ears, okay? Apparently there's supposed to be one in each class, let's see. <laughs> okay, there's no real need for us to know this, except that they put it in the book because we don't really do anything about that area of the head. So I have to remember that AU stands for the beginning of audio, okay? okay? So auricularis anterior would be in front, okay? Auricularis superior would be above the ear and auricularis posterior behind the ear. So think of the AU from the first word, auricularis, okay? And then write underneath it audio to help you remember because it's basically positioning. Those are your ear muscles, okay? It just looks like a flap right here and above, which is a lot bigger, and the one in behind the ear. Okay. So if you can think of AU for audio, you know that you're listening to something, right? So on your illustration, number one is going to be auricularis anterior, two is going to be auricularis superior. And three is going to be auricularis posterior. And let me know when you guys have finished putting this part in your study guide. people writing. You guys still need this on the screen? No? Okay. You should be going down to where it says eye and nose muscles. Is that what it says in your study guide? Okay. Yes. All right, so all you need to put in there is that we're going to be discussing the eyes and the nose muscles, okay? That's all that needs to go in that area. Come on, let's move this page. Oh, like having to wake this computer up. Okay. Oh, now it wants to go three pages ahead. I feel like a kid hitting the, the Nintendo too many steps and it goes ahead and everything. Oh, here we go. Okay, right, this is where we're supposed to be, the uh, eye and nose area, okay? All right, under your corrugator, oh, okay. It's going to draw <laughs> the eyebrows, okay, in and down. 
and it's really located like right here. So like there's a pressure point right there too. Okay, that's where your corrugator is, all right? This is what you're going to put into your study guide is it draws the eyebrows in and down. The next one was that Leviator Papyrae Superioris. This one raises your eyelid. Okay, that sounds funny. Leviator lifts up, right? Okay, your Avicularis Oculi closes the lid. So Oculi automatically, if you have if you wear glasses, you know what that word means, right? And then you have the Perseris, which draws the brow down. It wrinkles the area across the bridge of your nose. The way I remember the Perseris was this, I'm thinking I'm processing information. You know how people like sometimes like start thinking and they're like this and they squint when they're trying to think. That's where the Perseris is at, okay? It wrinkles the nose, so think of it as the processing muscle, okay? I'm trying to give you words to help you retain this information, okay, where these muscles are located. Okay, so Leviator is going to lift up that eyelid, right? Oh, <laughs> Obicularis oculi is gonna close it. Perseris is gonna draw the brow down and wrinkle the area across the bridge of your nose, right there. Okay, so fill those three in, in your study guide. If you can remember that Obicularis, you'll hear that twice, Obicularis oculi and Obicularis, um, Oh, obicularis uh, or oris obicularis. Just think of O's as being like circular. So two round like eyes. That's why I think orbit means like circulars. Okay, that'll help you. All right. Are those hard really? No, not if you really think about it. And this is where you would write little notes to yourself. Okay, the corrugator, what it's going to do. I just think of a corrugator running like when you talk about nails, you talk about corrugations, right? And they're always across, they're horizontal. So corrugator is right here, it's going this way, okay? On the face though, that's how I remembered that one. Okay, on your illustration on the next page, if you still have that, number one is going to be the corrugator, two is leviator, papyrae superioris, three is obicularis oculi, and four is gonna be procerus. Okay, so we're working our way down the face if you haven't figured that part out yet. <laughs> All right, so what's the muscle on the forehead called? The muscle on the forehead? Uh -huh. Frontalis. Frontalis, thank you. I'm trying to get you to remember what some of those, remember the bones and the, work, and the muscles, the name is similar, frontal for the bone and frontalis for the muscle, okay? Occipit, occipital for the bone, occipitalis for the muscle. All right, do you still need this on the screen? Okay, I'm going to move okay, slowly because it seems to wanna, there we go. Okay, here we come back to that obicularis again. So it's going to be, in your book, it might even say oris obicularis. Okay, I don't know why they flipped the names, but anyways, the oris obicularis, okay, circles the mouth and it's responsible for contracting or puckering or wrinkling your lips as in kissing or whistling. Okay, that oris for the O, now we're talking about the mouth. <laughs> All right, then you have the quadrius labi superioris. Now you can remember labi means lip, okay? So superior is going to be the upper lip, all right? It says it consists of three parts that are located above the upper lip. It'll raise the nostrils and the upper lip as in expressing distaste. Okay. So I remember where that muscle is located by the sound of its word. Quadrius is basically talking about extra parts. Labi means lips, superior is above. Okay, so sometimes you don't even have to put all of that information in there that I have like word for word, but just the things that help you remember what that word is. Okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people are just copying everything on there and I'm like, make it sensible to you. How is it you're gonna retain it that way? Okay. All right, you still writing? Okay, what I'm gonna do 
is give you a, your 10 minute break and then have you come back at 1.44, okay? We'll see you back here at 1.44 and have your little break. Okay. Okay, thank you guys.
Oh, he's five prime. What was that? You guys coming back? Almost, got four more minutes, three more minutes. So this is gonna be the fun part. <laughs> like what fun part? <laughs> is it really that hard right now, you guys? A couple of them you don't know because it was the first time you heard it. But let's just say the occipitalis and the frontalis you knew, right? From the frontal and occipital, right? Some of them are easy to catch up, but then uh, sometimes like too much information, like too yeah, much. I get that part. Like on the facial side, head, it's fine. But then when it comes to like uh, hands and legs, then those are like, seriously. Remember, just remember where your bones were located. Okay, if you can remember those bones, then the rest of it will fall right into place. It really will. So that's why I like to break it down into bones first and then go into the muscles and then go into the nerves. Because what sounds weird is that keeping the circulatory, because there's so many words in that particular area of it, anatomy, that the word, you've heard that word so many times going through these little you know, portions of this chapter, you start to remember what it really is by the time you get to circulatory, believe it or not. You'll realize you're like, how do I know that already? You know, Because you keep hearing it over and over. Yeah. So that's why I always tell my students, I go, even if you don't know anything about anatomy, if you could just figure out the bones, that 14, mm -hmm. which is only nine of them, they're asking you to remember, okay, and then eight, okay. and then cranial bones, and they won't have a problem with it. So we've got one more minute for the rest of them to come back. I know your textbook kind of looks like this, am I correct, at least, or your workbook or whatever you're getting off of the computer? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we don't have it anymore. It was one of those like cassette. <laughs> I don't even say it wasn't even a DVD. It was an actual VHS copy. Okay. That's how old it was. But what they did in that pivot point DV, VHS was they had a person, one person actually mimicking the expressions that you see or what they use as examples. Mm -hmm. So like when they get to like the buccinator and it says it's blowing between or compressing the cheese. It's like, so the person would be like, 
so you can actually see the movement. You know what I mean? It makes a big difference if you can see what they're actually talking about. But I'm not sure if the video that they have available for you at the beginning of this chapter actually does that. So I don't I know. I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to watch it tonight at 16 it, it minutes. It might help. Yeah, it might help. Yeah, it okay, doesn't. The actually, video doesn't. It doesn't? No. It doesn't go through the muscles or the, you know, any of the, the anatomy that way? I'll find you know, one for you. One? Yes, on the pivot point where it says you have the video that the video that's right above, I guess, my lesson plan. Where the slides are. Yeah, it talking? goes on. All right. Like you, but if you're my. still having trouble, literally, I don't know if you've heard this before. Um, it's called Schoolhouse Rock. Have you ever heard of that? Where they actually helped yeah. you, you know, learn like verbs and stuff like that. Well, they have one for anatomy and it actually is like a song. It actually is like a song. Huh? Venetia, you're gonna have to turn your sound off again. <laughs> I was trying, but it just get. Uh, okay, there we go. All right, who was talking? <laughs> Samantha thought she was trying to say something. But if, you know, okay. So if you look up Schoolhouse Rock and look up anatomy, there's like little, little clips that you can watch. They're like maybe a, like a minute and a half or something like that. But it actually does help you remember the anatomy because it's made for kids. Okay, and I used it when I first started teaching aesthetics for anatomy because I had a lot of girls back then that didn't have any anatomy at all. You know, and they had to have some kind of reference to go through. So you can use that, that website. All right, so let's go back to what we were doing before we left on here, okay, on break. And oh, hold on, bring it back here and I'll share the screen again. <laughs> that might help. Okay. All right, that's going to be our mouth muscles now, okay? So we have the resorceress, we have the canineus, the mentalis, and the quadrius labi inferioris. All right, so starting off with that resource, this one actually where it says draws the mouth out, up and out like it's grinning. I just kept thinking of the Joker from <laughs> Batman because it makes the muscles stay like this all the time. <laughs> so that's the only way I remembered that part. The resource was, was grinning, okay? And it just had this permanent grin like right there. And you can see where those muscles are where the arrows go. All right, the caninus is located above the corners of the mouth. It raises the angle of the mouth as it's snarling, like a dog, a canine, okay? So you can remember that one, like <laughs> how a dog actually starts to growl at you. All right, the mentalis. Okay, this is located on the tip of the chin, but the way I remembered this one was I'm mentally thinking. So putting my hand right on my chin, <laughs> that's exactly where it's located. You're like, I'm mentally thinking. So that's the mentalis, okay? To help you remember where that one's at. Now, quadrius labi, again, this is talking about lips. This one's going to be inferior, so it's going to be the lower lip, okay? So it's gonna pull the lower lip down or to the side as in expressing sarcasm. Like we all haven't used that before. <laughs> so these muscles aren't that hard, or at least you know where the general vicinity of them are, is what I'm trying to get at. If I put up my um, options, like a multiple, choice for these questions, you would get them probably right because you just have to remember where they're located at. And we remember we were starting at the forehead and we were working our way down, okay? So we started with the forehead and we went to the eyes and the nose and now we're working on the mouth, okay? So put just little clips in there, okay? The resources just put grinning don't remember that because it's the corner of the mouth. It makes the, <laughs> the sides go up. All right. The canine is basically raising that angle, like when there's the dog is actually snarling at you, and the mentalis is right here. Okay. All right. I'm going to check around the room here, make sure everyone's still with me. I'm seeing ceilings again. Can I see faces again instead? I mean, literally, I'm seeing somebody ceiling. Athena, can I see your face, hon? Can't have your caption, <laughs> your picture. There's more than that. 
There's more than that what? There's like five more mouth muscles. Oh, then they're talking about, yeah. We're getting to them. <laughs> oh, okay, I wasn't sure. I just wanted I to make, make sure. everyone sure. has this one right here. Okay. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to them, okay? Has everyone got this part of this, their study guide filled in? Do you need it still on the screen? Okay, and I'm gonna move this down so we can go through the rest of them. Okay, here they are, the triangularis, the buccinator, and the zygomaticus. Do you remember where the zygomatic was? The bone? Anyone? Cheekbones. Okay, so zygomaticus is going to be the muscle on top of the cheekbone, all right? So starting off with the triangularis, this is located below the corners of the mouth, okay? It draws the corners of the mouth down as expressing depression. Okay, the buccinator is located between the jaws and the cheek and it's responsible for compressing your cheek to release that air outwardly, like you're blowing, blowing air out. Okay, and then your zygomaticus, it's located on the outside corners of the mouth right here, okay? It draws the mouth up and back as in laughing, which is different than grinning, okay? So it's laughing. And it consists of a zygomatics major and minor. You don't need to know major or minor for the test, <laughs> okay? Just that it's the zygomaticus, all right? So zygomaticus should be one that you use from your, your bones, okay? So just letting you know where they are. But right here's those cheeks, the muscle goes right above. See how they pull up this way? And then the buccinator pulls down. Okay. Oh, I'm looking at you. Thank you, Athena. Max, give me a wave. There you go, okay. Karina, give me a wave here, okay. And Elizabeth, I got you. Where are you going, Elizabeth? You're just in a hurry. <laughs> I have to go get my sister and I had to make a truck payment earlier. All right. Does anybody need this on the screen anymore? Okay. So I'm gonna move down. Okay. And these are mastication muscles, which are your chewing muscles, okay? So let's go back to your illustration so you make sure that your illustration is correct. One is orus obicularis at the bottom of that previous page. Two is quadrius labi superioris. Three is quadria labi inferioris. Four is mentalis. Five is resorceris. Six is caninus. Seven triangularis. Eight zygomaticus and nine buccinator. Okay, so when you turn the page, you should have your chewing muscles, which is known as the mastication muscles. So I'm gonna ask you to do a little trick. <laughs> okay. Put your hands or your fingers right here on the temples, and then you're going to put your thumb right back there with the jaws, and then try and pretend you're chewing. And you can actually feel these muscles moving when you do that. So the temporalis actually is used for opening and closing your mouth, okay, when you're chewing, but the mastier is only closing the jaw, all right? So you can put fingers here and do this little trick. <laughs> so in your illustration on that one, temporalis first, and the second one's mastier, okay? And I just remember because I have to put my hands on my face when I'm doing this particular move. Master is like the bottom part. The temporalis is here and I can feel those muscles move when I pretend to chew something. Okay. Anyone still need that on the screen? Tatiana, am I still going too fast for you? No, you're okay. Don't feel, don't feel bad if you have to say yes, because I'll just slow down. <laughs> I have a habit of talking fast. <laughs> All right, these are your neck and back muscles. Okay, and that 
word is the sternoid clitoid masseus. And this causes the head to move from side to side like this or up and down like this. Okay. Your platysma, it depresses the lower jaw and lip. And it's like right here. I like to think of this one as like a platypus has a sad face <laughs> because that's what it's doing. It's depressing the jaw and the lip like that. <laughs> think of a platypus when you're talking about the platysma. All right, the trapezius is draws the head back and elevates your shoulder blades like this, okay? And the latissimus dorsi aids in swinging the arms. I don't know how, but I guess you can feel it from the back when you wanna move your arms, like swinging them forward. So what muscles again are we supposed to be responsible for as a cosmetologist? Face, neck. Neck. Um. Hands, mm -hmm. fingers, head. go ahead. Face, neck, head, and hands. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these, like the trapezius and the latissimus like, dorsi, they don't have anything to do with what we have to know, but it's actually giving you a little bit of more information there. Okay. Because we're not working over that trapezius or latissimus. Dorsey, or even the sternoid clitoid, unless you're giving them, I guess, an extended massage right here in the back. That would be the only time. The platysma, it's used when you're doing this part of the facial, right? Because it's part of that muscle right here. And actually turning the head this way when you're trying to work on one side and then working on the other side when you're giving a facial. So that's how we use those muscles. I'm checking to see if anybody needs this up on the screen. Okay. Okay. Isabella, are you still writing, hon? I'm I'm good. Anyone still need that on the screen? Okay. Tatiana, are you still writing, hon? No? Okay. All right. Going to go to the bottom of that page, okay, where the illustration is. Okay. And it's on the left side of that, or the right side, I guess, where it says three, four, five A, and five B. Platysma is three. Sternoid clidoid masseus is four. Five A is trapezius. And five B would be latissimus dorsi. Okay, we're going to come up to our shoulder, chest, and arm muscles. Okay, so that deltoid is going to lift or turn your arm. The pectoralis major and minor assist in swinging the arms. <laughs> Every time I hear this word, the pectoralis, I remember that silly commercial where the guy's going, hefty, 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 and he's like, pumping up his chest. <laughs> Sorry, but that always reminds me of the pecs. All right, and the serratus anterior, it helps lift the arm and with breathing. Okay, so pretty much those three areas we're not going to be working on either because we're not working on those body parts. Maybe the deltoid, but the rest of it, they're not going to. So, once you get that information in, I will go on down to your bicep. Okay. I just wanna check something if it's actually gonna give me the rest of this. So if you're not still writing, it's okay. I'm just gonna take a quick peek at the next part of this. Okay. okay. Just wanna make sure. <laughs> okay. Oh, I know that there's a question in here. <laughs> Okay, have everyone got that off the screen so that I can turn the page? All right, here we go. You're gonna go into your bicep, tricep, supinator, and pronator. So your bicep is the front of your upper arm, okay? It's going to raise the forearm and bend the elbow and turn the palm down. Your tricep is going to 
control the forward movement of your forearm. Your supinator is going to turn the palm up, like soups up, right? And your pronator is going to turn the palm down and inward. Okay, so you're going to go that way. Well, like this, soups up, pronator, palm down. Okay. Let's see if I've got something in here. That's about it. You've got your <coughs> flexor and extensor still left. Correct? Are those the last two? Yeah. Did it, yeah. You didn't go into the leg muscles or something like that, right? In your book? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. All right. You guys still need this on the screen? I don't want to rush you. I'm just asking. You got two more here, your flexor and extensor, okay? Your flexor is going to bend the wrist and close the fingers. And then the extensors, like you're extending out, is going to straighten the fingers and the wrist. Okay, so you do have an illustration below this. It says 1A, 1B, and then it has two through nine. So 1A is going to be pectoralis major. B is going to be pectoralis minor. Two is serratus anterior. Three, the deltoid. Four, the bicep. Five, the tricep. Six, the supinator. Seven, the pronator. Eight is the flexor, and nine is the extensor. Okay, before I go any further, I'm Can actually you going to. One? Which one? Three. Three is deltoid. Do Thank you need you. any other? Okay. No. Okay, so. This is this like little exercise to do, okay? I'm gonna give you 15 minutes and it's 201. So I'm gonna give you 15 minutes to do this. You're going to pick five words out of the muscles, okay? Five muscles and you're gonna use their words, okay? Not like my wrist or whatever. You're going to use the actual flexor, extensor, whatever the word is that you chose. And you're going to basically tell a story, okay? Think of a little story. I don't care which ones you want to use as your story. Okay, but you're going to make up a little story using five of those words. Okay, so pick out five muscles. Okay, and then tell me a little story. So you each have 15 minutes. Are we using the definition or just the word? Just to the like, word. Yeah, just so the word. It doesn't have to make story. sense. It just has to. Well, Kind of, it has to make sense, okay? So I wouldn't say that, um, let's take um, oculi for closing the eyelids, okay? I would, wouldn't say oculi um, temporalis. I wouldn't say the eyelids are opening and closing the jaw. Do you see what I'm saying? I wouldn't say that. I would use something that kind of makes sense. Okay, I open my eyes and you can use the word for opening the eyes. Okay, the eyelid, okay? I'm looking down the street and I open my eyelid or something like that, okay? But you're gonna actually use the word. So that one was what? Obicularis oculi? I'm just thinking, um, let's see. Yeah, obicularis oculi. I was thinking, okay, and the, it, I used my mentalis to think about what I was going to be doing, okay? Something like that. Is that giving you an, an example, you guys? Yeah, it's giving us an example. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to think of how I'm my corrugator make a was looking a little crazy. Do you know what the corrugator is? It controls the eyebrows. So who you know that actually has an eyebrow that goes crazy when they're mad? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Okay, so are you getting the gist of this? Because I'm going to go around and ask each one of you for one. Okay, 
So you're gonna have to come up with your own little sentence, but I'm only asking for one. Oh, not no, five. I want, I want you to do five, but I'm at one for me to go around each one of you to tell me a sentence, okay? You can turn in five and get extra credit. The five that you choose. Uh-huh. Like after the class, okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. You get just one, okay? So like, but you've got to be able to tell it, okay? I'll one, tell it. One, one sentence then, because I'm going to ask each one of you, so you're going to have to pick something, okay? There. Gosh, just really push me, don't you? <laughs> Uh, let's see what else could I give us an example. Um, my face looked like a resource for us in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think of oh, something. <laughs> these are going to be great. It's a fun uh, exercise. It really is. Uh huh. Some of the stuff people come up with, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> I have my sheet so I can ask each one of you as I go down this list. <laughs> so come up with a sentence from a word. One of your muscles, okay? When you're ready, put up a thumbs up so I can know who's ready and who's not. You're lucky you're not in a classroom situation because I would set you up in groups and you'd have to come up with a paragraph for five of those words, okay? Oh. Those are funny when they have to tell their story. They come up with some crazy stories. Max still in here? Yeah. Yeah, I've been here. 12.30 to 2.20, almost 2.30. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Do you have a question, um, Anthony? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. You guys picked a word? Can't use mine, so you're going to have to use something else. <laughs> Someone else in here. But... Okay, so if I started going around the room, right? I'm gonna start up. Anthony, you get the first shot. Oh, great. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to make it sound like a sentence, but we'll go with it. Okay. Okay, so when a Karen comes into my work and complains, <laughs> I caninus. <laughs> okay that's good that's good all right um athena are you in there 
No? Yeah. Oh, so they're just like, ah. <laughs> What's your word? <laughs> um, okay, I don't, I, I don't know if this is going to, like, if this is what you want, but okay. I pulled my bicep lifting up my bed. Yeah, that was perfect. That okay. Worked? Okay, cool. That was good. That was good. Um, Adriana, what's your word? Okay. The instructor knew I wasn't ready for the quiz because my mentalis was showing. <laughs> okay, that would work. <laughs> You're trying to get, okay, good. All right, Jasmine H. Um, sorry, I was still coming up with one. Okay, we'll come back to you. Okay, um, Jocelyn, have you got one? I don't know if this is what you wanted, but I, I tried my best. So okay. Just, so just bear with me on this one. You got it. <laughs> King Bicep of the Arm Kingdom was the primary leader who ruled with an iron fist. Before meeting <laughs> up with the Flexor, who controlled part of the Arm Kingdom, he left his knight, Sir Deltoid, to cover his place while he was gone. Oh my god, that was good. It was a long story. But that was good. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that was really good. All right, Tatiana, what's your word? Um, I said I have a headache on the left side of my temporalis. It okay. also hurts when I eat. That's good. Yep, that's good. Samantha, <laughs> what do you got? I put, I went to the gym to work on arms and now my bicep and triceps are sore. Good. <laughs> that was mine. <laughs> I'm the same one. <laughs> All right, um, Abby, what'd you come up with? Uh, my deltoid felt sore when I tried to reach up to something on the top shelf of the store. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> something on the top shelf, it's, like, it's a can of green beans. <laughs> that happens, yeah. <laughs> okay, Lena, what'd you come up with? Uh, can you come back to me? My daughter's screaming right here. <laughs> okay, got it. We'll come back to you. Thank you. All right, Karina. Can you come back to me too? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got much time left, okay? Um, Venetia, what did you come up with? <laughs> Since someone took yours. <laughs> correct order the client of the salon didn't like her hair design and was corrugating sign was doing corrugating sign so i don't know <laughs> corrugating sign. time her eyebrows were showing the corrugation okay i get that <laughs> all right max what have you got i said the same thing as working out and my biceps were sore okay um elizabeth where'd you go okay there you are. Can you hear us? Connected through my car. I use my obicular saurus to indulge my cheese burrito. <laughs> All right, Isabella. Are you in here? There you are. Yeah. Um, so I thought you said that we had to use five muscles in our story. I know. <laughs> you listening good, but I, Anthony talked me down to one because I wanted to hear everybody's at least uh, one. <laughs> okay, I'll, so I'll, just pick one. <laughs> all right, okay. Um, John decides to go to the gym, and what muscles will he work out? Legs, arms. First, John starts with simple arm weights. He decides to work out his triceps and biceps. And then there's there's more, but that's all. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. And you were really thinking those five. Thank you. <laughs> all right, um, Ava. Are you still there? I put. I got a pain in my temporalis after I got my wisdom teeth removed. Okay, good. Okay, so Jasmine H, have you got one yet? Yeah. 
Okay, I put, um, my mom knew I was trying not to smile because my superioris was twitching. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to say that oris is obicularis superioris or something like that, right? That's what you're talking about. Okay, the yeah. mouth muscles. All right, Abby, what have you got for me? Were we supposed to do two? Just one. Did I already get one from you? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just going back to the people. Okay, so I've gotten everyone, right? Everyone's had a chance to tell me a little story. Mm, no. <laughs> you have another one, Anthony? <laughs> well, no, but two people were busy. Okay, and I thought I wrote down Jasmine H, which she just said one, right? And who was the other one that didn't give me? Um, Lena, that's right. There you go. Lena, you got to come up and bring me a sentence there. I want to hear the stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She left with her baby? Oh, maybe. All right, Lena, are you there? I see her body. <laughs> Do you have a story for us? Just one sentence. Mine was just a simple one. I was going to say that I went to the gym, worked out my tricep. <laughs> Okay, we're getting the, you're getting the point. You, none of you should miss any of the arms and the leg. I mean, the arm muscles. Okay? For sure. <laughs> for sure. Okay, here's one. I'm going to go. Um, the teacher fell on her posterior. Posterior. <laughs> there you go. I'll leave it at that one. So, are there any questions regarding the muscles so far? All right, let's go back to your workbook. Okay, because you're going to turn the page to the hand muscles. Now let's fill that in and that will take care of all of the, yeah, the muscles. So hold on here, I'm gonna share the screen. Those were good stories for you. <laughs> it broke up the day. All right, thank you, you guys. All right, so we have abductor, adductor, and opponents. So your abductors are going to separate your fingers, okay? And your adductors are going to draw them together as if you were adding them to your fingers like this, okay? And your opponents is going to give you the ability so that you can grasp or make a fist, okay? I knew this one when uh, my brother got into his car accident and was in a quadriplegic and they had to put an, uh, an actual piece of um, equipment around his wrist so that he would be able to grasp something. So it's kind of weird how your muscles actually work in your brain, how they connect to each other through your spinal column. So I'm leaving that up there. And then tomorrow, or sorry, Tuesday, you're gonna go into the basic body systems. Like, um, let's see, past the circulatory, we're going into the nervous, sorry, excuse me, nervous system first, and then, into the digestive, excretory, respiratory, because there's like a sentence for each one of those, okay? And that's all that's left of it. And then we'll do the circulatory last, okay? So does anybody have any questions about the test for tomorrow? No, none at all. Do you still need this on the screen? For me. Okay, let me see. Making sure all oh, you're all looking. I'm just tired. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna take that down. All right, no questions, no nothing, you guys. You worked hard today. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna let you go because you worked hard. All right, thank you. And I'll see you tomorrow if you're coming to school tomorrow. If not, I will see you next Tuesday on Theory, okay, on the Zoom. All right. Bye, you guys. Thanks for Bye. playing. <laughs> All right.